All right, guys, we're halfway done here, but we have halfway left to go. Is the cup half empty or is it half full? I'd say, in this case, half empty, man, because we have we have more to go. I, I think about it that way. We saw Genius advance 2-1 over Boom Boom in the first game. He played straight up the second two games. He actually just did the same Warp Prism Immortal all in twice. Boom Boom failed the hold, and now it's an insane storm attack. It is. It is indeed. We're going to have Jachi against Symbol up next year. Symbol coming off pretty good at performance at Iron Squid. Jachi uh, was it, is it Iron Squid as well, if I remember correctly. Is that, is that true? Jachi, no, he no, was he, actually. Well, he was playing at Iron Squid, but he did not make it to the finals. The two Tyrone players that were competing uh, were MMA and right. Life. Yeah, he, but he, he played at Iron Squid, so he, he was at this event as well. Um, he Symbol was the one who looked much stronger, though, able to take out Nesty, for example. Really, really strong up and coming Berserk from TSL. Jachi lost to Nesty. That's the match that he lost in Iron Squid in the round of eight, if I'm not mistaken. So he lost against a Zerg player, and well, he is pretty strong. He just was able to take down JYP with two to one at the TSL CD2 code A. And now we're heading into our first match between Jachi and Symbol, which is going to be a Terran versus Zerg. It's going to be on to Atlanta Space yeah. Bear, man. And Atlanta it's Space a, Bear once again. It's a huge map. I, you know, I, I've said it before, it's not my favorite, but this should be a really interesting match to watch because it's definitely in favor of Zerg in some ways, but if the Terran can take control of the center and get that very cool base with the triple gas, one of them being an extra gas, things can go into Jokshi's favor. How will Jokshi play this one out? Jokshi's shown creative styles in the past, great multitasking as well. His finals against Leenok was uh, one of my favorites I've ever watched. The play from him I've seen in the past has been absolutely great. We'll see if he can take game one here against TSL Symbol at the GSL Code with Calder and Wolf. And to the top of Atlanta Space Bear starts in the red, our Terran player. He is in his best matchup here with a 70% win ratio of 52 wins and 23 losses. He's facing Symbol. It is our NS Hosio player. NS Hoso Chakchi. I have to make a confession. Chakchi is the one player where I never know how good he really is. I mean, he won a GSL. He did an awesome job and he's a very, very strong player, but every single time I cast a game of him, I'm not quite sure, is he really the favorite one in this uh, match, especially with Symbol just doing such a great job at the Iron Squid, or who is actually the favorite player in this match? Yeah. Well, here is our Zerg player, of course, on the other side of the map. From the team TSL, he is... TSL Symbol. I've seen this guy personally training at the TSL house. He's got a lot of great Zerg practice partners to work with, notably TSL Ragnarok, who hasn't even really been able to appear very much. Look forward to him playing in the team league, uh, says Coach Lee, but he has just been training with so many Zergs. That's why ZVZ seems so unstoppable. He was able to beat Nesty of all people at Iron Squid. Uh, but he's an up and coming player, looking very strong these days. We'll see if Josh can best him. I think this is going to be potentially our best match of the night. It could well be. If there's one matchup where Jagchi is struggling a little bit, it's his Terran versus Terran. That's where he is actually um, the weakest. And here come our winner predictions. Jagchi with 65% against 34. This is also pretty close. And a symbol showed at Iron Squid that he is very good against Terran. And well, he struggled a little bit against MMA, but he won against uh, Nesty before that, was able to uh, defeat Alive as well. So the thing is that this is going to be a pretty crazy game. Jagchi, if I. If I would have been put on a spot, I would say that Jagchi has a bit of an advantage here, but Symbol, with the run that he had lately, is definitely in a position where he can uh, take a map or two. Yeah, I'm, I'm just looking forward to seeing what strategy we see. This is not my favorite map, like I said, but how will Jagchi deal with Symbol on this big map? There are, are not as many bases as you might think on this map. There are basically five on each side, and there's like a sixth base that, that's kind of on the edge. But uh, this is a cool map in, in some ways, but if Symbol can get control of the map, Jokshi's going to have to use his crazy good multitasking, which is, by the way, crazy good. Something else to, to note, we saw our first Terran versus Zerg of the day. No reactored Hellions. We saw only Siege Tank clear the fast third command. So right now we do see Jokshi going for the double gas. We'll probably go reactor Hellions from here, but we'll see if he's going to change things up a little bit like we saw earlier on, because 
With the new queens, it's very difficult to use reactor hellions like they were used before. You can still use them, but it's much more difficult. It's something a lot of Terran players have been complaining about since the new patch. We'll see how he deals with this uh, this new change. I still think at this point it's a little bit too early to actually uh, judge how much the patch is going to affect the, the matchups. I think that Blizzard maybe released the patch a little bit too soon. A bit of testing uh, would have been better in my opinion. And I have to say that I agree with you. Uh, when you expect uh, trying to express doubts of this map because it's not really my favorite map. I don't like it all that much. This map and dual side are probably the two weakest maps in the GSL map pool at this point. And well, we have the reactor factory aliens exactly as you predicted. Queens yeah. using the uh, range that they have to take down the uh, supply depot, the neutral one. Yeah, you can see just how much uh, additional range they have. Watching them kill that depot is pretty I think they're going to try. Didn't they say that they are going to uh, change the attack animation? Yeah. Because it doesn't make any sense right now. In the Heart of the Swarm, I heard it's going to be changed. Uh, I, I heard actually that it was going to be changed in game before Heart of the Swarm, but it looks like they're holding off on that. I cannot wait for Heart of the Swarm, by the way. It's it's going to be so cool. I mean, Diablo 3 is already looking awesome, but Blizzard's got so many plans. Simul is pretty supply blocked at this point. Yeah. He's at 44 supply of 44 and just started to build his Overlord. Yeah, he's going to be pretty supply blocked for a while. Now, you guys are going to see very soon here the new... Uh, basically, what things are, are going to look like with this new patch. These Hellions are going to move forward and the Queens, with their new range, are going to be able to deny them and potentially continue spreading their creep. Cloak is coming out as a follow-up to this. He's not doing it with the third command center that we see so many Terran players do this with. He may decide to add that fairly soon, but just now he is not. It was scouted, by the way. It was scouted by the Overlord, yep. and now the Overlord is desperately trying to escape here. I'm not quite sure if he's able to get away with that. There are three Marines. That might be too much. Yes! The Overlord just dies, but oh like It turns out the everything. patch is balanced. I don't know. <laughs> uh, the Hellions can no longer kite Queens off creep. As you mentioned earlier, they now have the same range as the Hellions, so... It's gonna make it... Uh, it basically, Josh, you can't do cute micro tricks against Queens anymore. You just can't do that. There is the third command center going down for Small Joshi. crawlers immediately built, as he obviously knows that there's going to yeah. be a, a Banshee. And did he cancel? I think he cancelled the cloak. Didn't he? Yeah. Very good decision. In fact, he cancelled the Banshee as well. No, he didn't. No. It got out. I'm wrong. Yeah, I he... made a mistake. <laughs> nah, you're fine. I'm sorry. He wasn't on the production tab anymore. No need to apologize here. So he will try to uh, harass at least a little bit, but Cloak was cancelled. A very good decision, in my opinion, as he was aware that his tech has been scouted, and therefore he knows that simple. He will be prepared. Nice look at fire the, timing here. Look at the Overlord spread for Symbol as well. He's got Overlords in key locations where they cannot be attacked by Marines, but they can kind of spot things on the ground. He's going to be able to spot potentially drops coming around the top as well. Yeah, and the, Banshees. Really cool Overlord placement so far. The Overlords are kind of like the pupils of the Thunder Bear's eyes. Yeah. Wow. I like didn't think about it that way, but yeah. It's a blue-eyed panda. And, yeah. Wow. <laughs> I'm like, it's a very every time I look panda. at it, I just have to say wow again. <laughs> you got to stop looking at the minimap. I uh, yeah, probably did it on purpose. <laughs> Jokji is is moving out here to put on a little bit of pressure at the third hatchery. There are enough Zerglings to shut down the Hellions, it looks like, if he controls them well. And then the Banshee, there's only one of them, will be shut down by the massive amount of Queens. Here comes a little bit of attack. As a Terran player, I would not like this map because the Zerg player can just um, get bases everywhere. It kind of depends on if you build a lot of spine colors and small colors to defend them, though. This is what it comes down to. If you're able to shut down the um, multitasking of the Terran player by producing a lot of units. Daniel, good position, but wow, a little bit of a blunder here by Jachi. Apparently, busy in his main oh. base, not realizing that his opponent was just trying to catch his Hellions. I and hate he when Zerks do that, though, man. I'm like, I hope you get lucky and, like, he doesn't control his Hellions. And, like, in this case, it worked out, but every time I watch that happen, I'm like, I think he's gonna lose all his links. He had the Queen support, so I guess it was okay, but. That was a close call, but it ended up working out for him quite well, because now Jokshi has no presence on the map. He's got a Viking down at the south, but that's not going to accomplish much for him. He scouted the Mutalist, though. He's going for six missile turrets. Jokshi with an impeccable defense here. And I love how he's going for double for, for double missile turrets in certain locations, because he knows that a single missile turret is a little bit too vulnerable. Yep. Basically, Very he's not even putting them in his middle line. He's putting it at the entrance to his base. So the um, Yudas will never even have a chance to get in there. Nice split on the Hellions there, getting one of them uh, killed, but the other two do escape. 
And the turrets that you mentioned earlier with the first wave used will never, ever, ever be able to get into the main base. He's got plus one attack on the way, plus two carapace coming out for the Zerg player as his third base is now fully saturated, gas is up and running. Baneling speed on the way here. And Jogji is, is basically getting up to that composition that he wants. He does not, however, have the armory quite finished. It's only halfway done, so he's not able to continue his upgrades, which is really going to come back to bite him as Symbol gets ahead in the upgrades right now. Plus two melee on the way here. Oh, these mutas got to be careful. He's trying to catch a medevac that might be a little bit overzealous. Just trying to delay this also a little bit. Just make sure he catches him off guard. He keeps him busy. Make sure that he can't focus on all the things he want to focus on. Snipes of maybe lies. A medevac, an SCV as well. Good job, nice control here by Symbol. But Jackie, on the other hand, is doing a pretty decent job. It's very scary for a Terran to face the Zerg player on this map, though. If you're passive for too long, the Zerg will just take base after base after base, get all these upgrades, and this is exactly what we see Symbol doing. He's getting plus two, plus two. He's getting links and Mutalis, very mobile a unit composition that can control the map, can go for run buys, and he will definitely expand very soon trying to take four. Yeah, he's, he's got that aggressive power, that mobility. And Symbol, I mean, he, since he has these mules out, he also knows his opponent can't really drop him. Or at least if he does drop him, it's gonna he's going to lose his units that he drops no matter what. The creep spread is a little bit, I want to say, two-dimensional here. Like, it's going in two directions, but uh, it's, like, not going as far, fast as it could be, potentially, but... He has the potential to be pushing it really fast with the way he's doing it with four tumors at a time on one side, three tumors at a time on the other side. He's kind of split it up into two directions. Now it's actually going really, really well for him. So he's going to take that fourth base up at the, the nine o'clock position. I really like now how he's spraying the creep in that direction. Infestation pit on the way now. <laughs> Viking's still going to go strong with a little bit of harassment. Has one kill, will get the second one. Well, no, the Mews are going to come on their rescue mission. Mulers take down the Viking, the Overlord actually survives with 36 hit point and we also see the transition for Symbol which is just so important. In the past we've seen too many Zerg players rely on a tier 2 composition and uh, then just try to attack over and over again but wow look at this aggression by Symbol right now while taking 51 the... 51 While taking another base and going for the infestation pit we have a huge amount of banelings here with plus 2 attack just finishing, he's on 2 to upgrades hitting a nice timing here and this is a lot of, a lot of damage. And Jogji still has not seen it yet. The Mutas are going to clean up this Marine before he goes in, so he has no idea. Absolutely none here. Here we go. A it's ton of aggression. In. The Siege tank's trying to target out the Bailings, but there's so many of them. Most of the tanks are already gone. They're mutilating, they're sniping one tank after another. And Jogji is in trouble. You're losing a ton of SCVs trying to retreat. The links are everywhere. The SCVs, they die, all of them. This is a horrible position for Jogji. He's at 130 supply, lost 10 workers, but his army, even though he split so well, is getting demolished. Yeah, a really great trade for Simple. He actually could go and clean up some of these SVs. They're all very low on hit points, but he decides to get away. There are too many Marines here. He's going to try to target down the Siege Tank. A scan does reveal that Baneling. Nice try there. Resources lost a bit in favor of Jakji, but with a 50 supply lead at this point and four bases, Simple is doing really well. The high pick is nearly done. Jakji has a bit of a lead in the, uh, in the upgrades and is dropping into his opponent's main base. But the Lynx should be ready. He's trying to come back with a few of his units and he's doing a really good job taking the AC units down. These yeah. Marines won't not survive. They will not survive. The dropship will be taken out as well. Plus two finishing up now for these Mutas. Uh, Jokshi is continuing double siege tank production despite losing some of his workers. He only lost 11, surprisingly so. was able to keep a ton of his SCVs alive. He has about like six to eight SCVs that are in the red, like one hit point left, for example, on some of them. So he got a little bit lucky with that, but did defend okay. The problem though is the creep spread for Symbol is getting a little bit out of hand. He now has that fourth base up at the nine o'clock. He's got a greater Spire on the way. Jokji is making another reactor on his Starfort. He needs to start getting those Vikings out if he wants to deal with this greater Spire tech. If he doesn't, I mean, on this map, Symbol can just control the game forever. Yes, the creep spread that he needs in order to pull it off. Yes, the scouting information, thanks to all these tumors. Yes, the overwatching position. This is exactly what we've been talking about. It's a huge map, and for Terran, it's very hard to face off against the Zerg player who's taking base after base, has the map control, and it will just eventually overwhelm you with his unit composition and all these numbers here. Yeah. 
Simba looks like he wants to be aggressive now, but he's not sure which angle to attack from. He has to trade eventually to get those Broodlords out, but this is not the way to do it quite yet. He does take out one Siege Tank, but at the cost of a few Mutas. He still has a 50 supply lead. He's getting the Corruptors. The Crater Spy is nearly done. Plus three, plus three. It's on its way. And he is in an brilliant position here. Jokchi is really, really struggling. He has to get into a good position with his tanks, with his Thors that I really like against this composition Symbol is using. But if he cannot take down a base, then uh, I'm not quite sure what he can do to take this game. I'm not sure either. Uh, he's so hard to play here. He is desperately trying to clean up creep, but as he's out of position now, Symbol is going to run here. There's no planetary. There's nothing in that bunker. Symbol just looking so strong in this game. This has been quite a one-sided game after that engagement. Symbol just basically can do whatever he wants. He's going to be even on upgrades here. 3-3 three, three going to finish just a second before for Jokshi, who is, if you look at the army supply, is actually ahead by 4, 125 to 121. But he doesn't have the economy to remake army like Symbol does, who is also building the better composition now, adding Brood Lords, getting a few more investors into the mix. He's even got plus one Carapace on the way for those Broods, and... Great positioning here, though, for Jokshi, and if Symbol messes up an engagement and Jokshi can actually continue the aggression, he may be able to pull this off. I mean, he's not out of it yet. It's just been one-sided so much so because Symbol's got the Kree spread. He's got the more mobile army. And this is exactly what Jokshi has to hope for right now, that he is able to get into a position where he can trade very well, can carry the momentum into his opponent's base. And he's now just trying to retreat at this point. He's still on three bases. But it's very, very hard for him to put pressure onto the Zerg player because of these runbys, because of all these, all these points where the Zerg player can try to flank, and it's so hard for a Terran to face Zerg player on this map. Yep, indeed it is. Uh, the Adrenal Glands are going up now. He's already making the switch into Ultra. As a Ghost Academy is on the way for Jachi as well, though. That's going to be for EMPs. He can use it for Snipe a little bit, but with the recent patch, people tend, tend to avoid that. This Thor uh, is unfortunately very out of position, as well as these Marines. Not too much of a big deal, though. Jachi continuing to move forward here, picking off more tumors. He's, once he stops the creep on this side, though, Symbol's just going to spread it back on the other one. The Siege tanks are definitely a problem. Jachi is always scanning ahead. He's scanning the tumors. He's scanning ahead. He's just trying to make sure that he's not caught out of position. This is so important as a Terran that you always know where your opponent's army is positioned. We have Vikings now coming up. The Infestor count is at 4, which is a little bit low. Could use yeah. a few more additional Infestors. I'm a little bit surprised by this, in fact. So we're going to have a Command Center. Yeah, we have a small drop here. It does get cleaned up. Command Center is actually blocked by a Zergling in the uh, one corner of the map. He has to make a Missile Turret. He's trying to get that Triple Gas expansion, but he needs to actually... I mean, the problem for him right now, Kaldor, is that he's making more and more Vikings when his opponent is already prepared to make the switch into Ultras. He's even got the Chitinous fighting halfway done. Overlord speed being reasoned here. These drops are being very annoying to deal with, however, because he doesn't have Utilis anymore. But he just, he's not really losing too much of these. He's actually multitasking well enough that even though he doesn't have the best defense for them, he still cleans them up without losing a lot of drones. The worker count now, 69 to 56. He's got 92 larvae available to him. But he's exposing a bit of his, uh, his army a little bit. Finally, the drop gets taken down by the Corruptors, and now he might be in the position that he needs to be in in order to take this down. Another drop is uh, being rallied across the map by Jokji, not spotted by Symbol's Overlord. And he's going for the drop play, going for the Overlord speed. We have him with additional Overlords. He might just try to drop into his opponent's main base. That's something that we've seen um, a lot more often lately. But here we go with an attack. Not really. Would be a bit of a mistake to try, try to attack into the stroke point. But Symbol is just, look at his minerals. He has Corruptors actually, Kelder, flying around in space right now. Look at that. They're like at the he top left. He took down the medivac, didn't he? Yeah. He's trying to find more drops, too. He's actually just like, he's got the shark squad of Corruptors. He doesn't even need the Corruptors with his Broodlords just yet, but he's about to. Bunch of invested Terrans here to try to help defend the retreat path. But he's going to lose a few Broodlords here. Jokshi trading okay. The Vancener remains alive. He actually used a ton of energy on his Infestors to, to, to make that happen. He still has a lot of resources banked, but Jokshi, all it takes... Oh my I God. cannot stress this enough. All it Oof. takes is one poor battle for, for Symbol, and he can actually just push through and take out bases. I don't think so. He has 95 lava. 
95 lava and uh, he has the resources he can remix immediately within a second without a problem at all he has the resources he has the lava he did not miss any injects this is so tough for Jagchi. he has four bases though the four bases are basically his lifeline at this point and symbol needs to you, you're right he needs to be very cautious how he engages this but he has he, he has, has all the all, advantages. Yeah, he has all the pieces in position. He just needs to make sure that he uses them correctly. The Ghost will cloak here, and he's attempting to get into position to get the and faster. He's actually going to go for Snipes instead, and Snipes do go off. Surprisingly not just EMPing those and getting them for free. He takes out the Broodlords. Ultralists are being made now, but you know, I... This is still not the best position for Symbol. It could be better. He's got a lot of resources, but he needs to win some fights or it just doesn't matter. He's not winning any fights. He's getting more Infestors though, which I really, really like. But he only has four. Okay, he lost Infestors and Disengagements as well. Four Infestors is, in my opinion, not enough. He's uh, banking heavily on I'd like to see like nine things. or ten, you know? Uh, yeah. Fungals are just so important in this matchup. He's trying to catch these oh, ghosts. And he will. Every single ghost dies. The siege tanks in position. And he doesn't care. He just trades with the siege tanks. He's rolling the bait links in there. There are too many of them. Even the Vikings are now trying to tank the fire of the bait links. And oh my god. Jakji is dropping in supply while Symbol remaxes on Zerglings. Uses the second wave. Loses all his lava. He still has 68 lava left. Yep. He's going to lose his command center here as well. He cancels it. And this is what I was talking about, man. Like, he just needed to win a fight. Because then Jokshi, and he can trade forever, and he'll have the resources to remax. But he's won the fight now. His plus three is about to be done. He's adding more Banelings in 90 here. 90 supply ahead. Yeah. 90. 36 Banelings being made. Six Ultras about to pop. That'll put him up to a total of 15 Ultralists. Actually, I take it back. That just put him to nine. I was like, that's too many. <laughs> Uh, he's he's in a great position here. Simple lost. He made him. He, he took out all of the losing very little. He's kept his ultras alive. He still has the infestors here. Now I'm gonna go for this planetary. Oh, a little bit of awkward movements here for Symbol, but I think he just may still have too much. Great fungal, and I think this is gonna be the nail in the coffin. I'm not sure how long Jokshi is gonna be able to hold on here. Symbol did not screw up, and that was the one thing that Jokshi had hoped for. GG, as Symbol takes number one on a map that is definitely in his favor. We've seen it in this matchup. If you shut down the draw play of your opponent, the map just works in favor of the Zerg player because it is so huge and it's very hard for the Terran player to actually engage without opening himself to potential run buys. Symbol played it very, very well. Jokchi held onto this game for quite a while, was trying to get a good position, but Symbol just did not fall for it. No, he did not. Great control overall there. Uh, he, he struggled to win a fight, and that wasn't really his fault. It was because Jachi was so patient and so safe. But that's what allowed him to get that 90 larva up, allowed him to get all those resources up. And then eventually, he did win a fight. And from there, it was impossible for Jachi to recover. Just continued to attack wave after wave. The Vikings were all useless. He yep. landed them in that fight, but I mean, what were they for? Not Just much to do. Just trying to bait some of the Banelings to explode and uh, take a few of them out, but well... There were just too many of them. There are way too many, man. He killed the Vikings, didn't even care. Our, our uh, second map is going to be Metropolis, by the way. Yeah, indeed. It's going to be Metropolis. We will see another game where we could potentially see a very, very long macro game. But we've also seen a few players that try to play one base here, try to go for drop plays and close air positions. So there's a lot of potential for Jack G to be a little bit more aggressive than he was on the last map. You're right. It's a much smaller map. I mean, this is a, it's still a huge map, but it's much smaller. I think it's the much better map. We'll see what Symbol has planned here. Will he be able to play a long macro game and wear Jogchi down again? Will Jogchi show a different style, a better style, and tie things up here at the GSL Code A with Caldor and Wolf.